Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to discuss prefabs. I'm going to go over why you should use them, how you should use them, and just give a couple examples of how they work. So I have here an empty scene with just a light and a camera. And what I'm going to do is take one of the two characters that I have prepared here and just drop them into the scene. So I've got this little warrior lady with a big giant sword. And if I hit play, she's not going to do anything right now. But if I drop on an animation controller, you see, she'll start animating, just playing an idol. And now let's say I was going to make this character into an actual game character. So a game character is going to have, you know, more than just animation. It's going to have health. It's going to have scripts. It's going to have maybe attachable weapons, all kinds of other different things that you could add on to a character. What I usually want to do is start off by creating an empty game object. And this will be the character. So I'm just going to call it character and I'll give it her name too, Maria. Or let's call it character sword fighter. I like that better. There we go. So then what we'll do next is take the model and just make that a child of the sword fighter character, this empty game object sword fighter. And then I'll usually reset the position, get it so that she's right at the center, just pivoted right there at the bottom. Now, what we do next is start adding on our scripts. So in this case, I have two scripts. I have an animator randomization script that goes on all of these characters. And then since they're characters, they also have health. Right, so imagine this is an NPC in a role-playing game or a fighting game or something like that. So I've got a character here and say I wanted to place a bunch of these in the world. The, the easiest thing to do of course is just duplicate with control or command D and then move it around and now I've got two of them and you know move it again and maybe I got another one over here. So I've got three characters in my world and I save my scene and Everything is going good. You know, imagine my characters are running around the world fighting. Here, let's hit play and watch them run around and do some goofy stuff. So with the random animations, you see, they just kind of pick an animation. They start doing things. Replace this with gameplay in a real game. Now, say I wanted to change these characters, right? I've got these characters here, and oh, maybe the first thing I wanted to do was change the health. I don't want them to ha start off with 100 health. Maybe this character really should start with 50. So in the current state, what I have to do is select this one, go to 50. Maybe I multi-select these two since they're right next to each other and change them to 50. And now they all kind of match. So I went through and did that for three characters. Not too bad with three characters. Imagine I have a hundred of these placed in the world. Suddenly it becomes a little bit of a pain. I have to start searching. Maybe I start searching here for sword, fighter, you know, and then I pick them out and change them all. Fine, that might work for one level, but then I've got to go into my next level and then the next level and go through everywhere to find all of the instances of this sword fighter and update them. Instead, what you should do and what I always do is in the assets folder, we have a folder and just create a folder named prefabs. Prefabs, there we go, if I can spell it right. And this could be any folder on here. I just like to call mine prefabs. And what you'll do is take the first one and just drop that in there. And you'll notice right here, it turned blue. Now that blue means that it's a prefab. It's kind of a little bit hard to see, but the other ones are black and this one is blue. Now, what does that mean? That means that if I change the instance that's down here in my project view, the one that's not placed, say I decide, oh no, these guys need 75 health. And I change that there. Now when I find any instance of this character in any scene, like this one right here, You'll see that the value has changed automatically for me. So I'm only updating it in one place. This is like a template that we're reusing. Now these other two are not using the prefab. So what I'm gonna do is just delete those and I'm just gonna duplicate this one, maybe drag this over and then maybe I'll take one of the prefab, I'll just take it from here, the prefabs folder and drop it out. And now I've got three of them. So now I've got three characters but they're all blue and they're all using that prefab system. So now if I make a change to one of them, say I selected this one and I decided, oh, 100 was the right value. So let's change these back to 100. First thing you notice is that the text is black. The reason that it's black and or it's not really black, it's just bolded. But the reason it looks so much darker and the bold is here is that our value is different from the prefab. So like right here, we're at 100. If I select the prefab, we're at 75. So this, in, this is an indicator to let me know that the value doesn't match the prefab. Now I can fix that by hitting revert 
And what that'll do is reset all of the values on this character to match the prefab. Or if I wanted to, I can have this at 100 and maybe I want to change it for all characters. I can hit apply. And now if we look at these characters, you'll see they all have 100 and it's no longer bold. Now let's make a slightly bigger change. Maybe I don't really want this sword fighter model anymore. This is a placeholder and I've decided that I'm going to swap it out. Totally different art style. Uh, you may not make such a drastic change, but maybe, you know, you definitely will make changes from placeholder art to real art throughout the process, and this is a good way to do it. So I've got this character expanded, and remember we've got the, the model down here as a child. So it's somewhat separated and relatively easy to change out. So what I'm going to do is go to this Maria folder, and I've got another character here that does a lot of the same things. Oh, sorry, the Claire folder. Maria is the one already out there. And I'll drop Claire right there on top, delete Maria. And now this one, notice how it's black. That's because it's no longer matching the prefab. And the Claire is down under there. She's blue, but that's a little bit buggy. So what I can do is just hit apply and watch the other two. Now all of my characters are using this updated model. Right? I've made a change to the model and it just works. So it's changing out not just the components on here, but all of the children as well. So maybe this Claire, I also give her a cube, right? So I go to 3D object cube and I give her a little tiny cube that's kind of placed up by her hand, scale that cube down, select this thing and hit apply, and now they all have a cube in their hand. And I didn't have to go through and make a change multiple times, I just did it once and we're good to go. So the last thing I wanna show with prefabs is um, spawning them. So a lot of times when you have a game and you want to spawn characters at runtime, maybe you have a uh, character spawner, an NPC spawner or something like that, the way that you'll want to do that is with a prefab. So let's actually just go in and create a spawner script. So here I'm just in my scripts folder. I'll create a new C sharp script and let's call this, um, I think I'll just call it character spawner. Now I've got a script here. Let's just drag this over to the right side. And in here, let's clean up that formatting a little. What we're going to do is set it up so that we can spawn a character maybe every five seconds. So I delete out all this um, extra stuff. We're not using any of that and mark that as private. And what I wanna do is set up a serialized field. So the serialized field, my IntelliSense isn't quite working, but that's okay. I'm gonna do private game object, oops, game object. And let's call this character prefab. And then let's do another private float for respawn time and another private float for next spawn time there we go sp ah if i can get my spelling right and i'm going to add the serialized field attribute to respawn time and give it a default of five seconds now in my update what i'll do is check if next spawn or no, if time dot time is greater than or equal to next spawn time and that's just going to be like if we've passed the time where we want to spawn the next guy we'll go next spawn time equals time dot time plus respawn time and then we will spawn an actual character so to spawn the character what we'll do is game object dot instantiate you could also just do instantiate here but I'm just trying to make it super explicit and we pass in the prefab which is character prefab J -I -C, character prefab then we just give it a position and rotation so we'll do transform dot position comma transform dot rotation. Now, if I go back into the editor, what I can do is create a new game object. I'm gonna create a cube just so it's really visible where we're doing this at. And uh, I mean, I'll spawn, shrink that down a bit, uh, make it a little wider, make it just a little platform that we're spawning the character at. And I'm gonna name this character spawner. Then I'll add my character spawner script to it. Now here's where the prefabs come into play. So see, we have this character prefab field. Now what we can do is assign the prefab from here. Now uh, one mistake I see a lot of people make and you just gotta watch out for is a lot of the time people will take a scene object and like this character sword fighter and then they'll assign it there. That's really a bad idea because this character could be moving, it could be changing, it could get killed or destroyed. And as soon as that happens, this is no longer valid. It's not really the thing that we want to spawn. We want to spawn this prefab instead. 
So that was an instance of the prefab. This is the actual prefab. And if you look, it looks exactly the same, right? It looks like I didn't change anything. But now if I click it, it selects that. When I had the other one in there, like this, if I clicked it, it's like that. And like I said, this happens a lot. It happens to me sometimes. I've seen it happen to dozens of people. So just make sure that you assign the prefab, not the um, instance of it right up from the scene view. So now let's hit play. And I haven't tested this, but we're going to try it out and see it should just work. So we'll hit play and we should get a character spawning there. And then after five seconds, we should get another character spawning there. Oh, these ones aren't walking though. Okay, let's take a quick look at that. I know what the problem is, but we're gonna fix it. So if you look here at our Claire, the animator is still here. So we have that animator that's on Maria and she walks around. Uh, this one has an animator too, but the controller is missing. So since we're using a prefab, it's actually pretty easy to fix for all of them. I just find one instance of her anywhere, it doesn't really matter. Take the Claire Animator Controller, hit apply. It's now updated for all of these and that prefab. So the one that spawns here should just start walking or jumping or something. There we go. You can see they're just making some little random movements, random actions, and it just kind of works out. We got another one that spawned there and they'll keep spawning. So again, prefabs are extremely important in Unity. It's something that you wanna get really comfortable with. It's definitely the way to go for spawning objects like this um, and just reusing things. Again, you don't only have to use it for characters. You'll see the same thing for environment objects, you know, rocks, almost always just prefabs of rocks, you know, walls, buildings, anything like that. Anything that's gonna be reused generally gets made into a prefab so that it's easy to update and easy to just reuse. So I hope this kind of helps explain prefabs and kind of why you should use them, when you should use them. If you have questions about this though, please feel free to just drop a comment below or join the mailing list at unity3d.college. Send me an email and I'll reply and help you out. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and hit subscribe and share with all your friends.